everyone, Tony D with one final hot take of the evening. Uh, this goes together with another video I did a while back about what's cool. It, are the commies cool? And the answer is, of course, no, they're not cool. And I had talked about, you know, uh, the concept of, and this isn't mine, but Paul Joseph Watson talked about how conservatism has become the new counterculture. It's cool to be conservative. It is. Um, but the question is why? And why are people in Antifa and on the left so failing at being cool, even though they've got supposedly all this going for it? Well, one thing is they do have the establishment behind him, uh, behind them all. And that's the major reason why they're not cool. You can't be cool and be establishment. Um, they're trying desperately not to be establishment, but that's the only reason they're even around. Because if you look at the WTO riots, um, and there were a handful of anti-fa anti guys messing around in that, uh, they got almost zero coverage. Because at the time that was, uh, I believe that happened during the Obama era, maybe before, I don't remember. But, um, you know, there wasn't really widespread coverage of Antifa or their antics. No one cared. Uh, the extreme left wasn't a factor when those riots happened. Now, they've been figured into, well, uh, the, the general election. But the problem is, they've been figured in by people who are deluding themselves. Because in order to be a Marxist or communist or even a socialist, you've got to be a little delusional. And they recruit delusional people because it's the only people they can recruit. Because when you really look at socialism and communism, you see what a failed ideology is. You see Venezuela. And nobody can give you a good explanation of why it failed so completely. The best they can do is say, well, that was an actual socialism. Well, what about the Soviet Union? Well, that was an actual communism. Well, what about Cuba? And on and on and on. And they can't really give you an answer. They give you a bunch of, ex of excuses. They say, well, it was the outside forces that ruined everything. Well, if communism and socialism are that weak, are they really a good ideology, even if they're good even if they'd be good if you left them alone. Um, and if they are so good, why is it so hard to bring people over to your side is really a major portion of it. So the kinds of people you get to recruit um, are based on how well your pitch goes. Now the pitch for say like communism and Antifa is something like, well, you know, join us, we lift each other up. And that sounds pretty good on the surface but what it actually means in a practical sense is if you're destitute and homeless that's a great thing right you meet a group of people oh yeah why don't you join us we lift each other up okay i i got nothing to lose so i'll join you i get a couch to sleep on and they hand me like 20 bucks and give me food wow this is great communism and being an antifa is awesome then you go to people who they got a little money maybe they work okay <laughs> you don't really need to give them anything so what are you offering them well i guess if they went to college they get sucked into it because they want to be part of something a lot of people do maybe they're not all that together politically and economically so maybe they buy into it so but eventually you meet in with these people who have nothing and you know some people who have nothing they're perfectly fine people they've just had terrible terrible luck but a lot of those people well it wasn't so much luck it was drug addiction it was they're terrible people and dishonest people and they got kicked out of their house or they got kicked out of their apartment or they they robbed somebody and got caught or they got sued and they lost everything and there's a reason why they're destitute they're messed up they're they're, they're, they're mentally ill, they're drug addicts. 
So look at what happened to the New York Chaz in front of City Hall, which has just been shut down, by the way. Um, it was full of homeless people. Why? It wasn't started by homeless people. It was started by Antifa and all these left-wing idiots. Well, when they started, they're left-wing idiots, and they're there for an ideology and blah, blah, blah. But part of their ideology is, well, we got to lift everybody up. So they invite everybody in. And they don't have any vetting process, so literally anybody gets in. So a bunch of homeless people get in. They hear about, oh, this is a great place. And the Antifa guys are using the homeless people kind of as shields because they want to seem virtuous and nice. Plus, you know, if things go down, they could say, oh, my God, they attacked the homeless people. That's terrible. But once word gets out amongst the homeless, they kind of just all descend like a plague of locusts. They're hungry. I don't blame them. So they show up. They get a place to live. They get some free food. The college kids hand them money. But it quickly spirals out of control, right? Because the first few guys that show up, wow, they get the best sleeping places. They get some free clothes. They get money from these college kids. They get great food. Word gets around. By the time the 50th or the 100th person shows up, eh, well, we got a few slices of bread left. And, well, it's, there's that leaky tent over there. You can have that, I guess. And uh, I only got $2 on me. Hey, what happened to all the cool stuff I heard the other, you gave to the other guys? What about me? And there's always going to be dishonest people grifting, too, at that level. Uh, so you're going to have people who, oh, I'll take some free stuff. Are you homeless? Yeah, sure. I'm homeless. He <laughs> gets free meal, gets some free money, and then they go home. Um... The Antifa guys, they don't have a lot of good gauges on that. And they kind of don't even care. Because they're college students, they got plenty of money, and they just go back to the suburbs where they actually live. You know, they'll hang out for a few days, sleep on the streets one, once or twice just to get some street cred. But then they go back home to their parents' basements because that's where it's comfortable. And they finally get a shower. Yeah, no, this has been fun, but I'm going to go home for a little while. Rest up. <laughs> Not really getting the irony that... You're roughing it on the streets, fighting, fighting against the state while benefiting from your rich parents and living in opulent comfort by comparison. So really what I'm saying is the commies are a bunch of phonies. Um, and so once you sort of get in on their world, you realize, well, this isn't fun. This isn't exciting. This isn't like cool. You're just a bunch of fake virtue signaling a-holes. And worse than that, nothing you do is fun. Yeah, maybe smashing up a city is fun for a while to some people who don't have any sense of, well, decorum or honesty or just human compassion, really. So those are the kind of people you attract, Antifa and communists. You attract lowlifes who go, yeah, this is fun. I love bashing into a Nike store and using these kids to cover my escape as I steal a couple of dozen sneakers that I'm going to sell on the open market and make some extra cash on the side. Sure, I'm communist. Yeah, yeah, sign me up. When's the next riot? Whereas, if you look on the other side, the conservative counterculture, well, what are those kids doing? Well, they're making memes. That's fun. They're doing things like Gamergate, Comicsgate. Uh, I just saw a video, I, I retweeted on my Twitter, about Comicsgate. And it, it was a bunch of different people saying, I am Comicsgate. I am the leader of Comicsgate. Kind of like I am Spartacus moment. Uh, basically, Evan Van, uh, Ethan Van Skyver sort of just saying, nobody leads, nobody leads Comicsgate. And all these people are kind of involved. So... You know, why don't you go after them? And it was people of different races and genders. And uh, it just felt very wholesome, the video. Whereas you look at the videos for the Antifa guys or, you know, people on the left, they're mean. They're mean and they're hostile and they're angry. They hate Trump. And, you know, a handful of them might do a, a wacky song about Trump. That's so dated. I was out of Trump jokes 2015. You know, it's... 
not cool to punch down. And yes, you are punching down when you punch Trump because Trump already has billions of dollars of media against him. So it's easy to pick on Trump. You get attention from picking on Trump. You can pick on Trump all day long and watch your YouTube uh, subscribers go through the roof. You'll get uh, pushed by the Google algorithm because they hate Trump too. Now, is that cool? No, you're gaming the system. What's cool is some nobody has a viral video and it goes all over the place and people love it because it's just some random. It's not cool when a billion dollar, sorry, trillion dollar company like Google uh, games the algorithm and decides you're awesome because you hate Trump as much as they do. And they think, well, maybe this could go viral. We'll just give it a little push. Yeah, how'd that uh, 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 YouTube year in review go with uh, Will Smith? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, the commies aren't cool. They're just not. They're not organic. Everything they do is a lie. They inflate their own numbers. So you're invariably disappointed if you even join them. So if you join the commies, what you begin to find out is that they're lying to you, they're deluding themselves, and they're inflating their own numbers. Whereas if you go on, say, the Trump supporters or the conservatives or uh, Young Americans for Liberty or any of those groups, they're honest. They're honest about their numbers and their people and their enthusiasm is real. Um, this is why if someone goes in with, I don't know, an Antifa t-shirt and it's some regular sh Joe who maybe he's heard of Antifa and he's a Trump supporter, he'll just go, ah, eh, guy's probably an a-hole. That's about it. But go into a place with a MAGA hat and some people have a nervous breakdown. They get triggered beyond belief because they've been conditioned by the mainstream news outlets to like, oh my God, this is a racist. This is what you get from watching Rachel Maddow and her uh, uh, breathless reporting about Trump selling out our soldiers to the Russians because that makes sense. Communism isn't cool. It's not gonna be cool. You can't make it cool because what elements are cool about it? What's cool about being broke? What's cool about causing a bunch of wanted destruction for no personal gain? <laughs> you know, it's different when somebody, I don't know, steals a car. There's a certain cachet in that, right? Yeah, you've stolen a car, but it's kind of cool. You have a car now. You drive around in it. Maybe you return it. Maybe you just leave it on the street. You just went for a little drive. There's certain coolness in that. There's no coolness in burning a police car. It's super, super illegal. And what do you gain by it? Nothing. I mean, to the Antifa, to the bubble that's Antifa, yeah, you gain some some cred there, but that's about it. Uh, there's not really any cred on the internet. And in fact, you know, Antifa and the extreme left are really pushing their agenda on Reddit hard. So hard that they've taken over subreddits and politicized subreddits, some that aren't political at all. And they're just ruining it. They're just annoying people wherever they go. They tried to politicize what could go wrong. It's a fail subreddit where people, you know, fall down and make mistakes and there's little videos. That's it. That's all it is. People tried to politicize it. Uh, people got upset and it didn't work. Meanwhile, over at our anarchy or anarchism, uh, I got banned because I made a comment about something. I don't even remember what I said, but it wasn't even that bad. But um, the there was a bot that scanned all my account and rated my political leanings and then posted it right under my comment and I was like wow this is bizarre I I'm like this is like your own virtual version of the Stasi 
because you know the communists would have loved to have had that social credit score back in the day and they have it in china i wonder if it was a chinese bot that figured all that out but the anarchists oh they couldn't wait to ban me for my one comment and my political leanings which uh i believe were 54 percent uh liberalism i guess it's too much liberalism for the anarchist that want to control things yeah you know how real anarchists want to make sure everything's in their proper order that they don't want any dissent yeah those anarchists and what i mean by those anarchists i mean those commies